Hi, I'm Jamie and welcome to the CNFI podcast. Today I'm joined by Stan Palou, one of the creators behind Breach, an open source browser written entirely in JavaScript that's modular and hackable. Today we're going to be chatting about Breach, how it works and how to get involved. So to start things off, um, do you mind telling everyone a little bit about Breach and the main idea behind it? Sure. Hi, Jamie. Uh, it's nice to be here. Um, so Bridge basically is, um, is a modular browser where uh, when you start it for the first time, it doesn't have any functionality. And uh, you just need to install modules to bring functionality into it. Uh, it is based on Node.js and the NPM uh, module system. So it's uh, very familiar for developers to build new modules if they are familiar with uh, the Node.js ecosystem. Mm-hmm. Well, you just mentioned then that um, it's because uh, I'm actually interested to know more about the the modular element uh, of Breach. Um, can you explain a bit about more about it and talk about how it can actually benefit people? Yeah, sure. Uh, I think it's interesting to dive a little bit into the architecture first. Yeah, sure. Um, yeah, basically, sure. we we say it's a fully uh, GS browser. Obviously, there's a there's also a bunch of C plus plus underneath, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so what really what Bridge really is it's uh, the Chromium content module. So the content module of Chromium is a, a, a low level API that Chromium so Chrome also uses uh, to display mm-hmm. pages. Uh, it uh, encompasses uh, their multi process. Uh, system that they've been uh, bragging about when they first launched Chrome. So it's uh, basically a very simple API where you, you say, show me that web content uh, in that native view and take care of doing the multiprocessing stuff uh, on your own. And so we grab that content module, which has a very uh, extensive API because Chrome is based on it, and we embedded the Node.js thread next to it, and we exposed uh, the content module API directly into Node.js mm-hmm. so that what you end up having is when you start that uh, executable is a Node.js ripple where you've got a special API where you can create windows, create tabs and uh, start doing stuff with all that uh, web content and basically start building a browser using entirely Node.js. Oh, that's pretty cool. So when we got to that point, uh, with the goal was to build a browser, right? And when we got to the iPhone, we said, well, no, we can build a browser using only JavaScript and HTML, so that's pretty cool. Uh, but what if instead of building one given browser, we would try to uh, create more a platform for other developers to build new experiences? And so that's how Bridge uh, uh, was created, basically. Bridge, the idea being Bridge is to uh, multiplex that very API and make it available to a modular system where modules can run uh, next to each other uh, using that API. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, so it's, it's essentially for, would you say it's for developers who want to build a custom experience or would you say it's for more of a, a broader audience? Yeah, sure. Uh, well, the, the goal at the end of the day, of course, is for my mom and my friends to use it. Uh, but I think uh, as far as we are today, it's uh, specifically targeted to developers. You, have, you probably have to be a very, very tech savvy or, at least, or a developer to, uh, to, to use Bridge today. I mean, it's usable out of the box, but there's a bunch of stuff missing uh, still, of course. And so the idea is really to target developers and, and get people interested that are able to contribute to either the core system or to contribute through creating new modules to add all those missing functionalities. Yeah, I mean, uh, I think it was just launched recently. It was launched in, um, in public alpha, um, was it a week or two ago? Yeah, it was last Thursday, so not even a week. Yeah, I yeah, I mean, I, I, it's already gaining a lot, a lot of traction. But, uh, I mean, at the moment, though, there's only a, there's only a handful of, of modules that, that I've seen. Um, so, my question is, what, what different types of modules have, have you installed um, for Breach? Yeah, so um, basically there's been a bunch of uh, new tab modules because uh, we've put a special tutorial on the website to build your own new tab page. So we've seen a bunch of them. I've installed, I've actually installed one of them, which is which reproduces a, a new tab mod extension that you have on Chrome, where you see the you've got a clock and stuff like that. It's very nice. And then there's are a few guys that are starting to work on more um, more um, 
extensive uh, modules. Uh, there's actually work that has been started on a module manager module. That's all meta things are getting. Uh, it's because Bridge Basic Module Manager wants to stay as simple as possible. And there's a need for a more uh, extensive module manager where you could have discovery and stuff like that, and all that can be implemented in a module itself. Mm -hmm. So there's people working on that. Uh, there's another guy that is uh, starting to work on a bookmark module, of course. Um, and, uh, well, usually there's a bunch of guys working on different modules that are once in the first place, and that's exactly what we're looking for wants to reproduce the existing features that we see in the other browsers. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, the, uh, actually, I just checked, um, and uh, a breach car, breach underscore car, is, is, the, is the main um, module, isn't it? Um, and that I think that's been forked over 300 times, and it's been stargazed on, on GitHub 3,700 times. Um, yeah, so, yes, so, so, I mean, like, you're picking up a lot, a lot of traction. Um, a lot of interest. Uh, for those who actually want to get engaged and be a part of, of Breach, how would, how would you recommend um, people go about doing that? Well, uh, the first thing is to um, go on GitHub, uh, probably start at repository because it's always fun to start stuff and we're very happy to see that many stars, so thank you all. Um, and then you can start by the uh, bridge.cc slash ACK page, uh, where there's First pointers to the different resources that we have uh, ready for developers. They're very, uh, there's not that many resources ready yet. Uh, we're still lacking a proper API reference, uh, but there's a guy working on it right now. Um, I mean, that's how early the project is, right? And uh, in that, on that page, there's a tutorial to create your first module, which is always a good start. And then you've got links to the, um, to the mailing list and to the IRC uh, channel. Uh, we try to be as uh, as available as we can, and we really want to help anybody who wants to get involved. And so I would say the first step would be to try to do a first module just for fun, you know, create your own tabbing experience. And once mm -hmm. you get to there, I think it's a, it's the first step to go through if you then want to contribute to core, bridge core, uh, where it's a slightly more complicated way to contribute because you've got a, a slightly longer... Um, uh, develop and test uh, cycle because instead of you know changing the module or changing the whole core system so you have to restart the browser mm -hmm. um, uh, but when you're developing a module it's very easy you can restart the module directly from bridge and you see the the actual uh, if you're working on a tabbing system you would see the actual tabbings getting restarted and uh, and get refreshed so, so that's very fun so actually the the main the main module does that come with access to um the internet like can you can you actually have access to a url bar and type stuff in or do you have to go go out and and get another module for it uh well the the bridge so bridge is not really a module right it's uh, more like the uh, the platform in itself mm -hmm. it's uh, the module manager if you want to see it like uh, uh, like it, and if you launch Bridge Core with any module running, you won't be able to do anything. Mm -hmm. uh, you would just have uh, the the splash page um, with one link for conveni conveniency to the module manager, and that's all in terms of UI that is available in the Bridge Core when it's run as, on its own. Mm -hmm. Because the idea is really to bring all the capabilities, all the functionalities through other modules. So you would just be able to, when you run bridge code, you're just able to run another module. That's exactly the point. It's actually interesting that, that Breach is, is based on, on Chromium, I think. Um, would you say that it's difficult to merge with the latest version when there are updates to the API? Yeah, that's a very, very good question. Um, yeah, I mean, it's a pain because first you've got to check out the code and already there it takes hours. <laughs> yeah, I can, I can imagine. Um, <laughs> And uh, no, it's actually, it's, I mean, the, the content module API is a public API. It's used by the Chromium team themselves, of course, uh, but it's not um, a fully supported API in that sense. It means that first they move that API very, uh, they don't, they don't, they don't, I mean, they, they don't care about changing the API and that's what um, helped them uh, evolve things rapidly. So whenever they, you go from one risk branch to the other, you generally see quite a lot of change. So it's always a few um, hours of work of merging the code into the new branch. That's fine, you know. It's yeah. uh, something we, we're willing to, to put effort in uh, just to keep uh, as updated as we can with, uh, of course, web standards. Mm 
Mm-hmm. Uh, at the moment, actually, um, at the moment, Breach is available on Mac OS X and Linux. Uh, have you got any other OSs in the pipeline that you want to get yeah. Breach onto? Yeah, yeah sure. We, we, we had a lot of comments on an issue about a Windows version, of course. And um, actually, there's not that much code that needs to be done uh, to get a Windows version ready. Um, to be perfectly honest and transparent with you, the only reason why we don't have a Windows version right now is because I don't own a Windows machine at the moment. <laughs> that's that, that straightforward. And yeah. so uh, basically, we just need to find someone out there who is willing to put a few hours in it. Um, uh, willing to go through different oops of uh, checking out Chromium, um, adding the, 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 the bridge code on top of it, uh, doing the work, building the thing, and then we'll, we'll be happy to publish it. So it should, it should be, it should, we should have a Windows version uh, coming out soon, I guess. Okay. But you know, it's open source, so you never know. It could take uh, <laughs> weeks or months, whatever. <laughs> yeah. Um, to actually, to, to, to finally wrap things up, do you have any upcoming updates for Breach that you're excited about or any other projects that you're currently working on that you'd like to share? Uh, no, no other particular project. On Breach, we've got a bunch of stuff to work on. Um, I think what we're exploring right now is that we, there's a lot of similarities between uh, uh, the overall architecture of Breach and the overall architecture of Atom. Mm-hmm. And the, the GitHub team there has been doing a great work to package the Chromium Content API as a, as, as a library. And so we, we're definitely looking into using some of their work and join forces with them to uh, you know, um, make that step uh, easier. And so one thing that we're very excited about would be to be able to run Bridge uh, as actually a, 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 an NPM module itself, which would make... Uh, the installation and the development task much easier uh, for everyone. So that would be really awesome. And then we've got a bunch of API that we need to add uh, to let uh, people uh, create some very interesting uh, experiences. Well, hopefully all those, yeah, we, you know, the, the momentum keeps on going um, as it has been doing. And we see it on uh, OSs like Windows. Yeah. And... Uh, And yeah, I think that's it. So uh, thanks for your time, Um, Stan. It's been great talking to you. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, Great. It was great. Thanks. Thank you.